My name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. And I would like to welcome you to the evening services for Sunday, April the 3rd. We will be singing a few songs from Songs of Faith and Praise. Uh, we will observe the Lord's Supper and I'll have a short message for you. Uh, if you do not have that song, but you do have your device, uh, when I give you the number of the song, I will give you the title of it also. So if you uh, desire to sing along, uh, please, you can uh, Google that number or that name. And so if you would, please, we're going to sing first song number 477. The title is, There is a Place of Quiet Rest. There is a place of quiet rest. There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God, a place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, bless Redeemer, sent from the heart of God. Oh, us to wait before Thee, near to the heart of God. There is a place of comfort sweet near to the heart of God. A place where we our Savior meet near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, bless Redeemer, sent from the heart of God. Hold us to wait before Thee, near to the heart of God. There is a place of full release near to the heart of God. A place where all is joy and peace Near to the heart of God, oh Jesus, bless Redeemer, sent from the heart of God, hold us who wait Number 238. 238. The title of this song is, You Are the Song That I Sing. You Are the Song That I Sing. We're going to sing it through twice. 238. <clears throat> You are the words and the music, you are the song that I sing. You are the melody, you are the harmony, praise your glory my will bring. You are the Lord of Lords, you are the mighty God, you are the King of all kings. 
things. So now I give back to you the songs that you gave to me. You are the song that I sing. You are the words and the music. You are the song that I sing. You are the melody, you are the harmony. Praise to your name I will bring. You are the Lord of Lords, you are the mighty God. You are the King of all kings. So now I give back to you the song that you gave to me. You are the song that I sing. And the song before the Lord's Supper is number 792. The title of this song is My Eyes Are Dry. <clears throat> 792, my eyes are dry. <clears throat> my eyes are dry, my faith is old, my heart is hard, my prayers are cold and how I ought to be alive to you and to me. What can be done to an old heart like mine? Soften it up with oil and wine. The oil is you, your spirit of love. Please wash me anew in the wine of your blood. As part of the things that we're supposed to do uh, on the Lord's Day uh, is observe the Lord's Supper. Jesus met with his disciples the night in which he was betrayed, and he set apart this service. This service has become customary for us, but it is more than a custom. It is biblical. The scriptures that tell us that uh, Christians met on the first day of the week, and in the 20th chapter of the book of Acts, in the seventh verse, it says specifically, they gathered together on the first day of the week to break bread. It was so important that in the 11th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul uh, uh, puts the Lord's Supper together for the uh, church there at Corinth and for you and I to read and almost exactly the same terms that Jesus uh, set it uh, down for us on the night in which he was betrayed. And so we were told uh, there uh, in Matthew and Mark, uh, we are told in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 uh, to observe this Lord's Supper, uh, to partake of uh, the bread, to partake of the fruit of the vine, remembering the body that Jesus sacrificed and the blood that he shed. And so if you would please pray with me as we partake of the bread. Our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that uh, you had this divine plan for us. We're so grateful that Jesus was willing to leave his home in heaven and come down to earth in human form to feel everything that uh, we as humans feel. Yet being divine, uh, he was special, yet the physical part of him felt the pain of the cross. And so as we partake of this bread, help us to remember the pain which must have gone through his body when he hung on that cross for each one of us. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen.
Let's pray for the fruit of the vine, please. We know that under the old law that uh, atonement for sins was carried out through the uh, sacrifices, very often of animals, of bulls and lambs. And uh, when Jesus gave up his life, he made those sacrifices obsolete because he uh, gave himself of the ultimate sacrifice. And so as we take of this fruit of the vine, I just pray that you'll help us to remember the blood that flowed from his body, the blood that washes away our sins, and that we will remember this and it will be an ingrained part of us. Bless us as we partake. We uh, ask this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. At this point in the service, we do something else that's required of us, and that is we are to lay by and store that which we have prospered, that uh, we might give back to the Lord what is his own. We know that the church has a mission here on earth. The mission is to bring souls to Christ, and the mission is to help those that need help, and so that we can be a benevolent group along with being an evangelistic group. Uh, we just pray that as we give, we have the confidence that these monies will be used for their intended purposes. Let's pray for the giving. Heavenly Father, we're grateful that we can give and we're grateful that we have this opportunity. We just pray that uh, we will be just stewards with uh, the monies that we give back. We will uh, make sure that uh, the monies are used uh, so that your will uh, on this earth can be done. I just pray to Heavenly Father to bless us in our giving, that we would be cheerful about it, knowing that all that we have comes from you. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And if you would, number 202, 202. The title of this song is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. And if the music to this song sounds especially good, it should. Uh, the music is by Beethoven. <clears throat> joyful, joyful, we adore thee. <clears throat> Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before Thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround thee, earth and heaven reflect the rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou art Father, Christ our Brother, all who live in love are thine. 
Teach us how to love each other. Lift us to the joy divine. Mortals join the mighty chorus which the morning stars began. Father, love is reigning o'er us. Brother, love binds man to man. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us onward in the triumph song of life. Thank you uh, for being a part of our song service. I hope that you uh, sang with us. And uh, I just pray that uh, the Lord was praised in our song. And uh, I know that I certainly enjoy singing praises uh, to the Lord. If you were there this morning, uh, I did announce the title of uh, our lesson. And the title of it is, and again, a, a somewhat provocative title, but one that we ought to give thought about. And the title of the lesson is, The Most Futile Fight in the World. The Most Futile Fight in the World. Now, I'm not condoning fighting, especially in the, the world situation that we're in right now. And uh, what I do want to get at is um, we need to realize that there are certain very, very basic truths in God's word that uh, guide us in the way we live our lives. If there is anything certain in this world, it is that God's purposes will be fulfilled in the end. Now, Ben Franklin uh, once said, and I know that I, I probably take this out of context. There was more to the uh, statement than this, but uh, the short statement is terse and it, it kind of makes sense to us. And he said, there's nothing certain in this life but death and taxes. Uh, for those of us that are adults, uh, we know the taxes are there. And we all know that one day we will face uh, physical death. Uh, it isn't always something uh, predictable. Uh, we would think that we would all like to live a nice, long, uh, fruitful life. But we do know that uh, we don't have sometimes a lot of control over that. I'm reminded of that as I went to the uh, viewing this morning, a service of uh, a man that I knew uh, some years ago. And I knew him as a competitor on the baseball field. He was a very, very, very good baseball player. And from what I can read about him, I didn't know him just really, really personally, except for our interactions there. But uh, from the number of people that were at the viewing, he must have also been a very, very good man because there was a, an outpouring of people that were there to, um, to honor his death. Um, Ed, uh, just a year and a half or so ago, contracted pancreatic cancer. Up until that time, it seemed that he was very, very healthy. He had a black belt in karate. He was an awesome athlete. I know he worked out. Um, there are things that we just do not have control over. But God has control over everything. And again, if there's anything certain in this world, and I'm not going to talk about death and taxes again, is that God's purposes will be fulfilled in the end. Now, they were fulfilled all along the way in the Old Testament as we read the uh, the accounts of famous men like uh, Abraham, uh, of Noah, of uh, Job, of Jacob and Isaac and Joseph, 
uh, all of these men and, and the prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah and Hosea. Uh, as we, as we read these, we come to understand that, um, God all along was in control. Our Sunday morning Bible class right now, and we've been covering the minor prophets, is on the book of Hosea. And we're finding out through the prophet Hosea, again, that God is in control. And so here's what I'm, I'm kind of trying to get at this evening. Whatever we work at, okay, and I should say whenever we work at cross purposes with God. Our failure is not a matter of if. Our failure is a matter of when. We must walk and work according to the purposes that God has set down before us. And so let's, uh, let's always, uh, remember that. Um, it's it's not a matter of uh, of if this is going to happen. It is just going to happen because God is in control. Now, the devil is an awesome foe. Uh, let's make no mistake about it. Um, but not even he and not even his legions can thwart the things that God is doing to reconcile the world to himself. God wants all people to come to him. You know, that's repeated over and over again in the Holy Spirit inspired word that he desires that all men will come to him. And we know that Satan is on the opposite side, pulling people away. Now, with that, sooner or later, all that has been done, um, despite God, despite God, things that are done uh, almost with people making believe that God doesn't exist, will amount to nothing more than a couple of little off-colored threads in a wonderful uh, tapestry. The tapestry that God weaves into the great tapestry of his scheme of redemption. Now, if we just observe the Lord's Supper. It is through Jesus Christ that we are redeemed. It is through Jesus that we have redemption. And this was all part of God's plan from the very, very beginning, that his scheme would be there for us. Now, if you're wondering exactly where I, I kind of got the scripture for the beginning of this lesson, the most futile fight in the world, if you would turn your Bibles to Second Chronicles, Chapter 13, Second Chronicles, chapter 13, and look at verse 12. Verse 12 of Second Chronicles 13. And it reads this way. Now behold, God is with us at our head and his priests with a signal trumpets to sound the alarm against you. And then he says, O sons of Israel, do not fight against the Lord. Do not fight against the Lord God of your fathers, for you will not succeed. We can't fight against the Lord. It is futile. The Lord's plans will be carried out. In Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 30, the writer says, 
There is no wisdom or understanding or counsel against God. God is the counsel. God is the wisdom. Let's look at a couple of ways that we can fight this futile fight. One of the ways that folks fight that futile fight is through disobedience. You know, it, it should be obvious that we cannot get away from defying God's law. Yet, judging sometimes by our actions, people think that this is possible. The perfect law of God is what we must follow. When God tells us the greatest commandment is to love our God with all of our soul, with all of our heart, and with all of our mind, and to love our brothers as ourself, he is putting out the truth out there. And we can't back off of that truth. And you know, there is a time, I think, some people think that they're getting away with it. It's almost like, you know, it's not a lie if we don't get caught in the lie. It's not wrong if we don't get caught doing wrong. A lie is a lie. Doing a wrong is wrong. And when the crop comes in, as it surely will, it will be plainly shown that we will reap whatever we have sown. And so let's remember, number one, disobedience won't cut it. Being disobedient is a futile fight. Disobedient people will not prosper. And then there is yielding to whatever things that we desire. People that sell products try to let us know that their product is the best one out there. And that if we don't use their product, we will in some way, shape, or form be lacking. The great lie of the tempter tells us that if we fulfill our God-given desires outside of the Creator's will, the result will be better than what He was willing for us to enjoy. I got news for us. That's a lie. The Word of God tells us the things that we ought to do and the things that we ought not to do. And the desires of the flesh are not the things that we ought to do. There's no shortcut to any place worth going to that's outside the parameters of God's will. There's no better life. There is only death, an ultimate death. And that death I'm talking about is the death in which we are separated from God. Now, I have a little saying for you. It's a little kind of a golden nugget. Feel free to write it down. Feel free to make it yours. The saying goes something like this. We can't really break God's law. We can only break ourselves against it. But we shouldn't resent that fact. We should be grateful for it. We should be grateful that we have laws to abide by. You know, it's almost like the, the traffic laws out there. You know, those of you who are drivers, you know there are speed limits in certain places. There are traffic signs. There are places where we must stop. There are roads that we can only go in one direction. And it would be other chaos 
if there weren't those. And so those laws, traffic laws, have become very, very, very important to us. We shouldn't resent those. And if we get caught breaking one of them, we shouldn't be resentful of it. The laws are there to protect us. Any time that we do things in opposition to, way the, to the way the Lord's purposes have set about, the sooner we find out, the better off we are. The sooner we find out that we're going down the wrong road, the faster we can get off of that road and go down the right road. The sooner we know that we've done something wrong, the quicker we can repent of those wrongs and ask God for forgiveness. God doesn't want to frustrate our plans. But you know what? He does if they go in opposition to the way he wants us to go. Uh, saying almost, no, you can't go that way. He's also saying, look, look, here's a better way. All right? And we want better, don't we? We want to go the better way. Our very prayers should be that he will bring uh, to nothing as soon as possible any action that we do that is against what he wants us to do. And the faster we find out, the better off that we are. And you know what? It's almost like defiant people build up their own little kingdoms. They make their own little borders. They make their own little fences. And they put them up in defiance to God. And remember what it said in Second Chronicles 13, 12. Do not fight against the Lord God of your fathers, for you shall not prosper. And the NAS says, you will not succeed when we go against God's laws. Failure is in front of us. And ultimate failure is not getting to spend eternity with the Lord. I'd like to read something to you uh, by a man by the name of Lewis Everly. Uh, Lewis Everly was a Roman Catholic priest, and he left the priesthood, and he wrote several books about the spiritual life. If you want to take his name down, uh, some of those works are pretty good. His name is uh, uh, Lewis Everly, uh, Everly, E-V-E-L-Y. He said this, and see if this makes sense to you. God speaks to us unceasingly through the events of our lives, through the firmness with which he negates our petty, petty ordering of it, though the regularity with which he disappoints our plans and our attempts to escape, through his endless defeat of all of our calculations by which we hope to become able to do without him. Bottom line, when we try to do things without the Lord in our line, in our life, without the Lord in our plans, we will not prosper. We will not succeed. God's plan for us is the best plan. Leading godly lives is the best way to lead our lives. Disobedience, uh, yielding to our own desires will only put us at a crossroad with our God. And that would be dangerous for us. You know what? We, we need to be a part of the Lord's kingdom. 
And so I, I just want to remind you that uh, the Lord has set down the plan with which we become a part of God through Jesus Christ. We come by confessing Jesus as the Son of God, of repenting of the lives that we had lived that are anti the way God wants us to live. And by being baptized into the waters of baptism that we might raise in a newness of life and become a new person. If you need to come to, to the Lord tonight, uh, uh, just get in touch with one of us and, and we will be ready uh, to help you. I know uh, we're on YouTube and we don't have the physical touch, but, but we do have ways to communicate. And I, I pray that if you do need to confess your sins to the Lord, that you will do that. The invitation is open to you. Let's close with a prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this short amount of time that we've had together this evening. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, as we, as we fulfill what we need to do as Christians, as we fulfill uh, the truths of your word and the way that we live our lives. We just pray that uh, uh, you would look upon us and you would look upon us with a, with a, a, a comfort that uh, only you can uh, bring into our lives. Continue to be with us. We know there are members of our congregation there are friends of members of our congregation that are on our prayer list that can be find in, found in our bulletins. Help us to consult our bulletins or our website or our Facebook page and know that we can have those people on our hearts and in our prayers. I pray that you would be with Jane as she travels uh, cross country to be with her family. Uh, grant her safe travel and a safe return. Continue to bless us, dear Heavenly Father, because we stand in need of your blessing constantly. We ask this prayer in his most holy name. Amen. Please all of you be safe and may God bless you all. Joyful, joyful.